When buying a monitor for your camera, be it the kind of on-camera type or this kind of bigger production monitor type, absolutely everywhere you'll see the words 10-bit. And you think, great, you know, really good color accuracy, probably less banding and that kind of thing. But in actual fact, most of those claims are optimistic. What companies are selling you most of the time is actually not true 10-bit, but 8-bit, and then they use a trick called FRC. And I wanna just dive into that and tell you what's what in this video. So if you care about color accuracy, you should know whether your panel is truly 10-bit or whether it's 8-bit FRC. The difference matters when you're you know, grading or trying to match cameras, matching colors, that kind of thing. Um, but also why you don't necessarily need to panic if you do have an 8-bit FRC type. I do want to point out some specific examples and show you exactly what to look out for. Let's do it. As ever, I've broken this video into chapters for your convenience. Any comments, likes, subscribes all mean the world to me, so if you could, that would be amazing. Um, I also have a Patreon for anyone who wants to further support the channel. And so far, I have given away thousands of pounds, dollars, euros worth of uh, prizes. So um, do do that. It's really inexpensive and it really helps me to keep the lights on. I feel like I should explain the issue in a bit more depth because I kind of rushed it in the intro. Panel bit depth is a hardware thing and a 10-bit panel, a true native 10-bit panel, can display over a billion colors. Now, FRC, frame rate control, is actually a time-based trick where your panel will flicker between two nearby colors and our brains average them and that's how you kind of perceive those missing shades. And this is what makes our 8-bit panels behave like 10-bit. It's super clever, but not true 10-bit. When we think about why this is a problem for consumers, it comes down to expectation. You know, consumers expect native 10-bit. If they see 10-bit, they expect native 10-bit and the performance that comes along with that. And you know what? Day to day, it's probably gonna be fine. But if you're doing real color critical work like grading or matching footage across multiple cameras, these subtle differences can cause surprises. Banding, minor hue shifts in gradients and shadow steps are more likely on 10-bit plus two FRC panels than on true 10-bit reference displays. This confusion is caused almost entirely by marketing departments because they can get away with it apparently. And you know what? It just makes things tricky for the end user. At this point, I wanted to bring up something that I dealt with recently, and that's kind of related to this, kind of it's a similar marketing issue surrounding audio recorders, portable audio recorders. I did a video about this recently, and it's about how manufacturers of portable audio recorders say that they can record in 32-bit float bit depth when in actual fact, many of them can't. And this comes down to the number of analog to digital converters used. So each channel requires two to get that amazing bit depth, but a lot of them just have one. And it's actually a 24-bit file that they kind of wrap in a 32-bit container. So that's how they get around it. That's somehow how they can get, uh, get through the kind of marketing side of things. Um, and this reminds me of that quite a bit. So how do we spot if a monitor is true 10-bit or 8-bit plus 2 FRC style? I mean, obviously you can just have a look at specs, do a little bit of a deep dive and see under color depth if it says 8-bit plus 2. That's a dead giveaway, but often they don't. Another dead giveaway is when you look at the specs and it says 10-bit processing or 10-bit input, meaning it can accept a 10-bit signal or it will process it in a 10-bit way, but that's not the same as natively 10-bit. Another giveaway, which I know a few of you will be screaming at the screen, is uh, is price. And um, you know what? If it says 10-bit and it seems too cheap to be true, it probably is. Finally, I would suggest just moving away from the spec posted on a manufacturer's website, because you know what, if they said 10-bit once and you don't believe it, it's not gonna contradict that. So look to third-party uh, reviews, you know, uh, see if someone's done a teardown, that kind of thing, because that will reveal the truth. Third-party independent reviews, that's what to look for. You know, for example, uh, you know, articles, third-party places with not without kind of bias, or um, YouTube channels with British people speaking. I just wanted to call out a few uh, monitors 
that are well known and we can just go through, um, look at the marketing behind it. And uh, just this is just, you know, I, I don't want to kind of trash any companies or anything. There's no, uh, no uh, offense meant by any of it, but let's just take a look. Looking at something like the Portkeys BM5, the spec sheet is explicit about the trick. Portkeys, they say it's as 10 bit in brackets, eight plus two FRC. This tells you exactly what's going on. And this is honesty in advertising, and I love this. Yes, it sounds less romantic than 10-bit, but if a product page uses that exact phrasing, you know what you're buying. So well done, Porkies. Then we have Small HD and looking at their Smart 7 series. Small HD often use the phrase 10-bit processing rather than claiming native 10-bit. I guess that's useful because it is technically correct, but it's also the reason you should read the fine print if you need native panel accuracy. Do check their spec pages. I, I don't think these are true 10-bit panels. There are many budget-friendly brands which do IPS field monitors and state their 10-bit like the OC 22S4, which I reviewed recently. My advice with this is if the spec sheets look ambiguous, I would assume that it's FRC, or you can just get in touch with them and ask. And if they cannot or will not confirm native 10-bit, treat the listing as an 8-bit panel with possible FRC. But here's the thing, and this is getting super practical, and you know what? To me, 8-bit plus 2 FRC looks excellent. Y you know, I've seen 10-bit uh, panels, I've seen 8-bit FRC panels, and they're really, really close. You know, it's such a clever technique, and it kind of really works that I don't think most people need to worry about this. In my opinion, where 10 bit really matters, true native 10 bit is high end, high end productions, broadcasts, that kind of side of it. And you know what? In that case, they often will just have the budget to own or have rented true 10 bit monitors anyway. So, in every other case, I think 8 bit plus 2 FRC is. Excellent. Anyway, now I just want to kind of just gather up everything, this mess of a video, and make it into a few uh, summary points for you. Read the fine print. Native 10 bit is different from 8 bit plus FRC. Yes, it's better, but it's pretty close. On the spec, look for the words 8 bit plus FRC or 8 plus 2 FRC if you want transparency. Beware if you see 10 bit processing or 10 bit input. Don't assume that the panel itself is native tender. I wanted to shout out port keys again because that's an example of how panels like this should be marketed. It's a really good example of where they've used 8 plus 2 FRC implementation uh, and they've just put it on the specs. Small HD and a lot of others, on the other hand, use careful wording. And yeah, don't let that fool you. This really reminds me of the analogy of my 32-bit float audio video. Headline marketing specs versus what the customer expects. I do recommend you watching that video. I'll, I'll link it for you. And to my final thoughts, and here's the reality. Look, 8-bit plus 2 FLC can look excellent, and real world, I don't think most people are gonna notice. So my gripe is not for the visual differences between 10-bit and 8-bit FRC. My gripe is with the marketing. As with the 32-bit float single ADC trick that they use, we need more uh, transparency from these manufacturers and I understand what they're trying to do, but it's not okay. Anyway, that's it for now. I have loved putting this video together for you. Um, do let me know your thoughts. Um, I have just one question for you, and that's, uh, did you know about this? Is this news to you? Uh, definitely let me know in the comments. I'll be down there. I read all your comments. I've now made hundreds of videos for YouTube, and um, Google's algorithm has selected this video for you, and I guarantee you will love it. And you can stop here. I'll see you next time.